guys, let's talk about the table saw. Remember, we're truing up a piece of stock. We have it perfectly flat on one surface, one edge straight and square with that surface. Then we made it of uniform thickness using the thickness planer. Now, step number four says rip to desired width. Ripping is cutting lengthwise with the grain, okay? And we do that on the table saw. Now, we have a saw, a table saw, which I absolutely love because it's got an electronic gadget in it which can detect the difference between wood and human flesh. If while this machine is running, you touch the blade with your finger, it'll stop dead in a few milliseconds. You may not even break the skin. If you do, you probably just have a tiny, tiny cut. This is a saw stop. It's a wonderful innovation. When I started teaching many years ago, we didn't have saw stops. And every time somebody turned on the saw, the table saw, I'd kind of look over if I could just to see if they were using it correctly. Because if you don't use this machine correctly, you could have a very serious accident. So I'm going to review the proper way to use it for you. And then I'll tell you about an actual accident that did happen to somebody that I know. So when you're going to use this machine, the first thing you do is you set the blade so that it clears the wood by about a quarter of an inch. There's a wheel down here you can turn to raise and lower the blade. Next, you decide how wide you want the cut to be. So you can measure the distance. Everybody's listening now? When you want to cut a piece of wood that's four inches wide, you measure from the fence to the side of the tooth closest to the fence, okay? Whatever size you want, set that distance correctly. So I don't really care. I'm just showing you how to use the machine. So I'm going to cut it like this. Next, you have to remember that your finger should never be within four inches of the blade. Just like on the jointer, fingers must be four inches away. So I can start the cut holding on to it, but I have push sticks ready to go, ready to use, okay? By the way, I should comment on these push sticks. Well, this one looks kind of dead. When you use the push stick, sometimes the stick is so thick that you can't fit it between the blade and the, the fence, and so maybe you want to use this kind of a push stick, which is narrower. So that's why we have two different push sticks here. So you often have a bigger piece of wood, so you don't, you don't want to try to hold the push sticks like this. No, you just hold the piece of wood with your hands and pick up the push sticks as you get it closer to the blade. I'm holding against the fence. My fingers are well away from the blade. Now I'm going to use the push sticks like this. My right hand is pushing. The push stick in my left hand does not go up there. It stays back on the near side of the blade. When I'm finished the cut, I don't reach around the blade to get my piece of wood. I walk around to pick it up. Okay, so now we've just completed step number four. We've ripped it, it is of uniform width, okay? This isn't a safety issue, but remember, when you're making something in woodworking, typically you want the piece of wood to be of uniform width, so you've gotta take the first edge, the nice straight square edge that you made, put it against the fence and rip it. Then you'll know it's the same width from one end to the other. Now, I mentioned keep your four fingers four inches away, Use push sticks to keep your fingers away from the blade. Never reach around the blade. Set the blade to the right height. What else is there to mention? Um, I feel like there's one more thing I forgot. The story. What? The story. The story. The story. I didn't mention kickbacks. I didn't mention kickbacks. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Here it is. I've mentioned I have a straight square edge. If this edge is crooked, if it's not straight, as you're cutting, the piece of wood rocks and it kind of jams between the blade and the fence and it tries to kick back, right? So that's why we always follow the steps in that order. You get this nice square edge. If you have a square edge to run along the fence, no problemo. Now, once in a while you have to cut a piece of wood which isn't straight and square. If it's too wide to fit on our jointer, then you're going to have to bring it to the table saw and cut it. But then you have to be careful. A twisted, crooked piece of wood is more likely to kick back. And I would say if that happens, 
ask me to cut it for you, okay? When you've got more experience, you can handle it. Now, there is a man who worked for our school division. He's been retired for two or three years now. Um, Eric, I forget his last name. Uh, probably some of you might have seen him. He's been around our school division. He worked here for 30 years, but he was missing part of his little finger and three fingers, and I think his thumb was okay. His whole life, he was like that, because when he was a kid, he was using a table saw. It wasn't a saw stop. That was before saw stops were invented. Anyway, he had a piece of wood which was twisted, okay? A crooked piece of wood like the, the one this one was when we started. And so as he was cut, oh, and by the way, he forgot to lower the blade. He left the blade sticking up high. So as he was cutting, because it was twisted, it was kind of jamming and starting to kick back. So he was holding it, and then he reached around the blade to hold it down. When he pushed down on this corner, it jammed against the blade even more, and it kicked back this way. The blade was up high, so he lost those three fingers and a piece of his little finger, okay? Because he broke all the safety rules that I just mentioned to you, okay? You should have a straight square corner, okay? You should set the blade to the correct height. You should never reach around the blade. Use push sticks to keep your fingers well away. Now I wanna talk about the saw stop and just what happens here. This technology was probably invented about uh, 30 years ago. It took them another 10 years to get enough money to start manufacturing these machines in China somewhere. But if you look over here, you'll see a, a blade and you see this plastic with a spring behind it. What happens is somehow it can detect the, as I told you, the difference between wood and meat. And if it detects meat, an electronic sensor will release that spring, which will fire a block of aluminum into the blade. Well, it destroys the blade. And of course, the block of aluminum gets destroyed too. So it costs us about $200, a blade and the sensor mechanism, but it saves your finger. And we've been using saw stops now for a long time, and I can't say that it's ever saved anybody's finger. We've never had it go off like that because somebody touched the blade. But guys, if the blade has been turned off and it's just coasting and you touch it, it will trip the mechanism. So there's never a reason to touch the blade. If you wanna see how that works, you can go on YouTube. Just go saw stop and there's a little demo of it happening, okay? Don't, don't touch the blade if it's still even turning a little bit because then it'll cost us uh, 100 bucks for the new uh, electronic device. Now, there's one more thing that can go wrong with this machine and that's kickbacks, okay? If you don't use the machine correctly, especially if you're cutting a narrow piece of wood or if you have the blade tilted towards the fence. Now, this fence, actually could be put over here on the other side of the blade and never want you to do that because this blade tilts it'll tilt to the left there's a hand drill down here you can use to adjust it it's not going to happen for quite a long time for you guys but if this blade is tilted and you've got a piece of wood jamming between that blade and the fence it is very likely to kick back it can kick back with enough power to go through you or part way through you. We had a, a, before we got our new shop, this table saw used to be exactly in line with the buffer. The buffer is this daddy over here. This same piece of wood is, I'm still using, I saved it. You see this hole I've got my finger in right now? A piece of wood kicked out of the table saw, which is about, I don't know, 15, 20 feet away and it hit this piece of wood hard enough to go right through, okay? Is that why you put it in front of the door? No. But anyway, the point is this. Use the push stick, okay? Control it, be careful. The saw stop can't prevent kickbacks, but again, I'm singing the praise of the saw stop company. Kickbacks are far less likely with the saw stop because the saw stop has an innovation which no other table saw has. 
see this little piece of metal that goes behind the blade? Okay. If I raise the blade, it goes up with the blade. If I lower the blade, it goes down. If I tilt the blade, it tilts with the blade. And what it does is it prevents the blade from binding. As you make a cut, you can see there's a, a gap here, right? The thickness of the blade. Well, sometimes a piece of wood, because of the way the, knot, the tree grew, because of knots in it and so on, after you've made the cut, it, it tries to pinch the blade. It tries to kick back. It doesn't happen often, maybe one piece of wood in 50, but if that happens, it really tries to kick at you. But because of this piece of metal, it's not going to happen. Uh, since we've had this, um, I can't say we've had a significant kickback at all, but still, beware of it. You use your push sticks, you hold on tight, you control it. And remember I said you don't use this one on the other side of the blade? That's because if you reach around the blade and push here, you're tending to pinch the blade. Now, because we have this ribbing knife, it's not going to kick back and get you because it's a saw stop. But if you're going to be using a table saw at home or on a job someplace, realize that this machine can be dangerous. You must use it carefully. I say again, straight square edge to roll on the fence, set the blade to just slightly above the wood that you're cutting, don't reach around the blade. In this room, we use this machine only for ripping, okay, only for ripping. Cross cutting is when you cut in this direction, and perhaps this is the main thing, everybody's listening here, as a beginner, if you're going to use this machine, I'd like you to think about this little cartoon. Noah, come close enough to show this cartoon. This is probably the worst thing you can do as a beginner. At the beginning, some guys think, if I want to cut a piece of wood off, I just go to the table saw and put the piece of wood against the fence. If you do that, it will fly up into your face, guaranteed. Now, in our room, we wear glasses. We don't require face shields. You could be knocking out teeth if you do this. On your safety test, I'll probably mention that three times, and when I talk about the miter saw on that safety test, I'll mention it several times. We never, never, never cut to length against the fence. Now, there is a gadget called a miter gauge. It fits in this slot, okay? You can hold your piece of wood and, and cut it. But the fence must be far away. And because this is a school with hundreds of kids using it, I make it simple. My rule is never, never, never cross cut on here. Because as soon as somebody forgets and has the fence there, it will kick back. I had a school student ball in my class once. He wasn't hurt. He was wearing a full face shield. A kickback hit his face shield so hard it scared him so badly. He had tears running down his face. Okay? So, so listen, never cross cut on the table saw. The miter saw will do the job perfectly and that's where you must cross cut. I think I'm done talking about the table saw. Let me look at my safety lesson just quickly. Oh, I should comment on guards. There's a guard on the other table saw but there isn't a guard on this one. I think the machine is very safe in that if you touch it, it's going to stop dead. But still, a guard is there. It'll help prevent kickbacks. But I don't have a guard on this machine because it gets in the road for a lot of the cuts that we want to do. If you, want to, if you don't want to cut all the way through, then you have to remove the guard and that's a big hassle, okay? So these two machines are the same as each other. You can use that machine the same as this one. Uh, technical schools, woodworking shops, that I've seen don't put a guard on this machine and so neither do we. If you touch it, it's gonna stop, you won't be hurt. The risk is kickback and you know about kickbacks. I'm done talking about the tables.